First question for you is going to be from Chris Ballas from the Wolverine. Hey, Coach, what we saw from Devontae the other night, is that the, what you've been seeing from him in practice and, and what you need to do to continue that? How much of that is confidence? Uh, he's been working extremely hard in, in practice. Um, he's been playing with, with a lot more confidence lately. Uh, we all know that he was capable of uh, playing the way he has played uh, in the last game. You know, we just need him to continue to to play that way and be aggressive on both ends of the floor. And the one thing that <clears throat> we were really happy with was uh, how he pushed the pace of the game and really, I think that got himself going on both ends of the floor. He didn't seem to hesitate to when they went under ball screens. Is that something you need to do him to do is take that shot when it's there? Yeah, I, I think that's a good shot for him. Uh, obviously, you know, we would like for it to happen in the floor of the game instead of coming out you know, pressing for the shot early. But uh, I think we've spent a lot of time working on, you know, what to do when teams do try to get under our ball screens. Next up will be Andrew Kahn from M Live. Hey, Coach. First, first of all, just kind of a follow-up on that last one. I mean, I imagine, you know, you don't want him shooting, you know, 10 threes a game. But, like, if a team goes under like that and is kind of daring him to shoot, is it sort of just as the message, shoot it, make it, and then they'll have to adjust defensively? Well, we know if he is able to make some shots, it will open up the rest of our game. So they will hopefully have to change their coverage. The thing is, we don't want him coming out pressing or feeling like he has to make every shower. He has to make it uh, when they go under. You know, we have other things that we can do to uh to hurt teams as they start going under our ball screen so when it's there and it's in the floor of the game uh, we do encourage them to shoot that shot gotcha thanks and then um with 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 kobe how often like do you work with him i mean he, he could be considered a point guard but i also know he, he kind of plays on the wing too is he is he fall under your uh purview i guess at, at practice or well he's been working a lot with uh everybody actually so he yeah works with the point guards and he split time with the wings and he's even jumped in working with some of the bigs or post moves. So he's a very talented kid. And, uh, we're going to continue to work with him and, and help him get better. Uh, he's a big part of what we're going to do in the future. And uh, we see growth in him every practice. Thanks. Next up is uh, Brian Bush from uh, our radio. Hey coach. Appreciate the time. Uh, with Zeb, uh, Talk about his kind of growth and improvement this year and, and just how difficult was it for him with the illnesses to, to kind of get into game shape and be able to, to do some of the things he did on Saturday? Well, first, you know, with Zeb, you have to start is how good he has been to the program of himself and until everyone, you know, it was a tough, difficult time for him when, you know, he was out and he couldn't be around the guy. So it, it, it set him back a little bit, but he's been working hard to get back up to speed, especially with this condition. You now, we all know how talented Zeb is, and he just has to keep moving forward and, and keep at the pace that he's going. Next up, we'll move over to Michael Cohen from the Detroit Free Press. Hey, Howard, appreciate your time. Thanks for doing this. Um, early in the season, a lot of the players have talked about with so many new faces, there was always going to be an adjustment period of learning how to play with each other and the strengths and weaknesses of each guy, what they like, what they don't like. Um, from a coaching perspective, what has it been like to try and find the right lineup combinations with so many new faces? And how would you say that's come along as, as we get closer to the, the real start of Big Ten play, if you will? Well, it, it was definitely an adjustment, you know, with so many new faces, as some of the guys might have mentioned, and trying to find the best playing groups who complements one another. Uh, so we still are working through that. I think, you know, one of the strengths of our team is that we have guys that can really step up on any given night. So it's something that we're going to continue to work on throughout the year and um you know with us it's always next guy mentality so maybe a guy's not going well tonight then there's someone else's opportunity to step up and play well but we're very connected as a team and we all root for one another so you know we just got to continue to try to be pulling in the right direction so to follow up on that, some of the guys, like you said, uh, might step up on any given night, which means that, you know, maybe one night a guy gets a lot of minutes and the next game, maybe it's not quite as many and, and vice versa for different players. 
for the guys whose minutes do fluctuate a little bit, what are the types of things that you say to them so that they remain engaged and they know that just because maybe tonight they didn't get the minutes tomorrow, they could be counted on and, and they might help you win a game? Well, our message has been very consistent in regards to that. Just stay ready because you, you, you never know. So we've been preaching that from day one. Uh, Coach has done a very good job of delivering that message to our players. And I don't think our guys look at it as a me against the next person. Is how can we get better and how can we uh, do the things we need to beat the team that we're playing at night. So we come to practice every day and it's iron sharpened irons to get us ready to battle whoever we're going to be playing our opponent may be. Thank you. Uh, we have a follow-up with uh, Chris Ballas from the Wolverine. Coach, how do you fix shooters who maybe don't have the confidence? For example, Frankie from the free throw line, uh, clearly practice is one thing, but there are, are there other things you can do to, to get those guys out of a funk? Well, shooters shoot, and that's one thing that we've been very consistent on is we, we do a lot of shooting, you know, before practice, uh, during practice, and our guys, again, a lot has to do with confidence, and it's a field thing. Uh, you know, we've thrown a lot at them up until this point and getting comfortable on the floor and understanding, you know, where their shots may come from. That was going to take a little time, but I think we're starting to get to a situation they're feeling comfortable and have an understanding of where they may get shots. So uh, I give our guys a lot of credit. You know, it's, this is a group that really put the time in and they really work hard on their own. It's not, they're just not showing up for practice. So they're very diligent in their games and, I think you will see a lot of improvement as we continue to move forward. Uh, we'll go back to uh, Andrew Kahn from MLive. You were just kind of talking about the, the minutes uh, fluctuation. I mean, Zeb and Kobe are kind of, you know, big examples of that, you know, double digit minutes, then, then maybe a DNP and then back into the rotation and, and they play well when, when they're out there, I guess those two guys in particular, you know, what kind of with their length and, and some of their shooting, what, what are the things that they can, uh, you know, bring to the team uh, and offer on both ends of the court? Well, I think you just said it, you know, their ability to be a, a tough guard for any team on the perimeter. And, you know, they can play multiple positions. And, you know, we're not afraid to put out a three-guard line. So depending on who we're playing against and that opponent may be that night, you know, you can see a lot of different lineups like, we feel our guys, uh, especially Kobe and uh, Zeb, can play together in some situations. So, again, it's, again, we're all pulling in the same direction, whatever's going to be needed on that given night. Thanks. Uh, Coach, we'll go back to uh, Michael from the Free Press. Hey, Howard. Uh, Juwan had, had talked about how he was pleased with the way the turnovers have been cut down in, in the last couple of games and, you know, still an area where he thinks they can improve. But, you know, the progress is definitely there. Um, I was curious on the on the inverse of that. How have you guys felt defensively about the number of turnovers that you've created? Is it where you like? Are you getting enough deflections? How do you feel on that end? Uh, you know, as coaches, it's never enough. Right. Um... But, you know, deflections is something that we feel that because of our length and our size that we should be able to get our hands on a lot of balls defensively. And that's something that we always encourage. And, uh, you know, when you start thinking of steals and turnovers, you know, we're all for that, but not at the stake of getting out of position and, and gambling. So, you know, it's always a happy medium trying to be disruptive, but not to the point where you're getting out of position uh, doing your defensive assignments. Thank you. Coach, we're going to head over to uh, James Hawkins with the Detroit News. Hey, I would appreciate your time. You, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but you mentioned that you guys are willing to, to go to a three-yard lineup at times. Well, I guess just yes. what's about that look and I guess just the different dimension that kind of brings. Well, with, especially with the two guys we talked about, their ability to make shots and really be athletic and create defensive matchups uh, is more of the thing that we'd be looking at, you know, guys that that's athletic, you put them on the floor, it can cause havoc on the defense. And then just going back to the young guys, uh, Kobe and Zeb, I guess just where have you seen the most growth for them this season in their game? Uh, it's, it's, it's been hard, you know, with Kobe, for example, you know, he played limited basketball last year uh, and we've thrown a lot at him. We asked him to, you know, try to understand and, multiple positions, maybe at sometimes playing one through three. So that's a lot that we've thrown at him. So 
you know, we have to continue to to work with him and pour into to help him continue to grow. And he's been absolutely fantastic and and retaining the information and wanting the information. Um, he's a workaholic. He stays in the gym, so he's he's going to be fine. Um, I think his best basketball is still ahead of him. And again, Zeb, you know, he's getting, working himself back into into shape. You know, he had two. Uh, sense where it kept him out and not only was he out but he was away from the team as well so you know, those things are, are tough to recover from but Zeb is going to be a part of what we do as well. Coach we'll go back to uh, Andrew with uh, M Live. Um, you know I know a lot of ass is asked of, of the point guards I guess with, with Frankie being you know a young freshman what are the things you know in particular you know you're helping him with you know in film study or, or on the court or, or wherever. Uh, with Frankie and, you know, a lot of our freshmen, you know, they come in and they want to make an impact on the game right away. So one of the things that we talk about with them is making singles and not always looking to make the home run play or the home run, home run pass. So that's something that, you know, we have to, you know, talk with all of them about, but mainly Frankie because we, we want his turnovers to, you know, get those down a little bit. But we don't want to take – away his aggressiveness because he is very good at attacking the basket and getting to the rim and create for others. So again, trying to find a happy medium for him as well. Thanks. We'll head back to Michael from the Free Press. Yeah, I just had a question about um, Eli. Um, the, the number of shot attempts he's gotten in the last four or five games has been pretty consistent, but the, the shooting percentages are down quite a bit from the first four or five games of the year. And I was wondering if you guys have been pleased with the quality of looks that he's getting or, or if there's it's just nights where it doesn't go in. I think it's just nights where the ball doesn't go in. I think now teams are really starting to key on him. He's a part of the other team's scouting report more than probably what they have been in the past. Uh, we're very happy with the looks he's getting. And again, we, we expect him to make shots, especially open shots. And we're not really worried about Eli in that aspect. We know he's going to give to the team. And he's been pretty good his whole career about taking the right shots when given to him. Great. Thanks, Howard.